All right, what's up guys? In this video, we are going over making a seamless repeating pattern all in Illustrator on the iPad. I have done this before in a past tutorial for Illustrator on the desktop version. I made the tutorial a few years ago. With the desktop version, you can get a lot more precise with the different measurements, but there's a really easy function to do this on the iPad that honestly makes it that much more easier. So let's get into it. I'm gonna go ahead and open a document I made in the last two tutorials where I was vectorizing a drawing I made in Procreate. Um, that's this cool Dungeons and Dragons theme. So what I've got going here if I open up my layers <clears throat> is just on each layer there's uh, different pieces that I created from a vector drawing I made each piece is on its own layer but that's not required for what we're doing what I would do here something that I recommend my students to do is just like create some variety in the scale and the positioning I'm not going to be too attached to the positioning in this document I'm gonna be able to change all of that later I'll show you what I mean I'm gonna go ahead and expand any uh, effects that I already have on there, such as this guy. Let's go ahead and expand that and keep that as a group. But I'm not too particular with how it's arranged in this document. In fact, it might not even need to be a square. But let's go ahead and just create some fun or interesting tilts and rotations. I try to tell my students to have a few bigger objects, a few smaller objects, just to move the viewer's eye around. And I think that's enough variety for now. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste all of this into a new document, including the background color. So let's go ahead and grab all that. The scissors over on the right lets me copy appearance. I'm going to go into a new document. My students have been making these as if they're going to be making pillowcases. And a pillowcase, a standard one, is 20 inches tall by 30 inches wide. So let's go ahead and make that our size. Inches, and because it's vectors, anything can scale up. 30 wide, 20 tall. I'm keeping it at RGB because these would be printed, or no, I'm sorry, CMYK, because these would be printed. Haha, -ha, I caught myself. Create file, and let's go ahead and then edit, paste that in there. I'm going to scale it down because the pattern I don't think needs to be that big, but what I do want to take up my entire document is the background rectangle. Let's just go ahead and select that and scale it up. I'm going to lock that background layer so that I don't accidentally click on it and now let's go ahead and finish arranging our pattern here and uh, I will be able to edit this later so I'm not going to be too attached to how it comes together just yet that looks nice alright so here's the cool and easy function if I select all the pieces that I want to be in the pattern down the bottom right we have our repeat functions one of which is the grid I showed the mirror in the last one and if we click on that grid Bam, there it is. There's a repeating pattern. A few ways to tweak this now, right? <clears throat> the, uh, the corners from the bounding box, I can choose how big or how small my pattern is. The larger uh, white bars, if I click and drag those, I can change how much it repeats on my given composition. I'm going to go ahead and make that take up my whole screen. A few other things, though, is I have these arrow sliders on the top and the left side. If I click those, I can change how close the pattern is to, pro like, on its proximity. I'd recommend not having things overlap too much. Leave a little bit of space. That's nice, but that's really it. Really cool though, one more, like, like one other function is that, like I said, I'm not too attached with how I position things in the original document because if I double tap on any object here, I'm going to double tap, I can move it around and if I move it around in one of these grid spaces, it moves in every other grid space as well. Let me show you on a bigger object. If I double tap my wizard hat, Double tap my wizard hat. Here, let's grab this one. I can move it on one, and it moves on all of them. So I can rotate. I can adjust my pattern entirely from there on out. So a few other things, right? You could export this as a JPEG or a PDF, however you're trying to save it. Um, you could hide the background and export just the pattern as a transparent pattern to add on something. Maybe you're doing this for fashion, and you want to create a vector of your... Uh, of the article of clothing that you're putting on. I think that's like a fashion flat, right? If I just made like a really quick circle, oh, nope, that, <laughs> I made the circle inside of the pattern. You can, you can do that, right? You can make new shapes. If I make a circle on top of the pattern and then just select the circle and the pattern in my object menu, I can make a clipping mask and I can attach that to any shape. And that's really it. That's the basics of seamless patterns in Illustrator. Thank you for watching.